with Endwalker just over the heels, so many people are still coming to Final Fantasy XIV. This is the second installation of some super random but super important tips that Sprouts and new players are going to want to know when starting Final Fantasy. We'll be talking about retainers, how to unlock your chocobos, and leveling multiple jobs. Hey guys, my name is Stefan Ash, and I have my part two of my Final Fantasy tips and tricks for you. I want to give a huge shout out to my new Patreon supporter, Lord Zavius. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon, and I really appreciate your continued support. If you get any value out of this video, then don't forget to limit break through that subscribe button, and let's jump into it. Number one, this is kind of interesting that some players are still having issues with this, and that's unlock your etherites. Attuning to all the etherites in the city allows for fast travel in the city as well as fast teleportation outside of the city to any of the city entrances. This is imperative for fast travels in early parts of the game. You can always check where you need to go by clicking on the main story tab or going to your map. If you're in the city, then you just go to one of the mini or main etherites and scroll down to the very bottom, and those will usually be the exits for the city. You simply just have to click and you'll get taken right to the entrance or exit of that city. Also, never forget to attune to etherites that are outside in different locations because a lot of the time you're going to have to go back to them and you're not going to have to make the journey back on foot. Number two, learn your rotation. Rotations are an inevitable portion of the game and it's not similar like other MMOs where you can just spam or button mash the same button. This game is meant to have a flow of abilities that are hit in a more optimized order. My number one recommendation for the rotational guides is Wesk Albert here on YouTube. He does a phenomenal job of breaking down every single job and their ability. If any veteran players are watching this, then leave a comment down below as to some other places that Sprouts can look for rotations. You also have the Balance Discord as well as Salted FinalFantasy14.com, SaltedXIV.com. I'll leave all those in the description box down below. Number three, which grand company should I use? Once you hit level 20 in the main story, you're going to have to make a decision on which grand company to join. It does not matter which grand company you join, you can join any of them. It does not affect the progress or the story of the game. Once you're in the grand company, you're gonna wanna get something called grand company seals. I highly recommend this easy method for getting grand company seals. It's a little work up front, but it will pay off in the end. You're gonna want these grand company seals because they give you access to a lot of things and eventually it just becomes passive earning, which that video will explain more in detail. Number four, this one's a little hard pill to swallow, but only try to level one or two jobs during your playthrough. Now, I'm not telling you how to play. You can do whatever you'd like, but if you want to get through the main story, which a lot of content is gated behind the main story you're only really going to want to focus on one or two jobs the few reasons are is that once you finish the main story you have a multitude of ways to level up alt jobs much quicker than doing it all at once while you're playing through the story two you'll get bonus experience when you have your main job higher than the rest of them if you have a black mage level 80 and you want to level up a red mage you're going to get bonus experience called the armory bonus this is in place of the road to 70 or probably road to 80 with Endwalker because those only last for three months and you're not going to be able to level everything up in three months. There is no particular way to check how long your road to 70 or road to 80 lasts. You can guesstimate by going into the chat box and doing slash playtime. That will show you how long you've been playing but doesn't necessarily show you the road to 70 buff. When you switch to other jobs, they do start at level one. So this is why it's just easier to focus on one or two jobs. When I played through the main story, I had a DPS job and a healer job. The main story does give enough experience that you'll probably be able to level two by going back and forth. Later on, you do get classes that start at level 30, 50, 60 on the later expansions. So you can potentially change jobs later down the road pretty easily if one of those jobs suits your fancy. Number five, do your class quest. This is something that is such a misconception still for newer players that they think their class, let's take Conjurer for example, will go up to level 80 and then you level up your job to level 80, which is White Mage. The classes are just prerequisites. You're only supposed to take those to level 30 and then you equipped your job stone. 
do not forget to equip your job stone. The classes are only meant to be played till level 30. Once you level up your classes and then your jobs, you'll want to keep doing your class quests, which just are the quests that pop up under the main story icon. These unlock abilities, these unlock class gear, as well as they unlock armor and things you need for your job. Another pro tip is that you'll actually get armor for level 50. But again, after level 50, you're going to want to turn over to Poetics gear. I have the video linked below. Poetics gear will be your main source of gear all the way up until level 79, except for there is a turn in Stormblood when you need to equip higher gear in order to do the last quest of Stormblood. You get free class armor and weapons for that particular, I can't talk right now. Just do your class quest. <laughs> Number six, you can have gear sets. In order to save a gear set, you're going to want to equip the new main weapon. Once you have it equipped, you're gonna hit save gear set in the top right corner. Once you're on that gear, you can simply go to the menu and hit this button right here, which then is going to save that gear set for your new class. This is really great for staying organized and fast changing jobs when you're playing throughout the game. If you're on console, you can put these on cross bar seven or eight or four, whichever ones you're sharing. I have a video for the controller guides as well that I'll link down below. And then you can access these cross hop bars by pressing R1 or right bumper if you're on Xbox controller or holding it and you'll see all eight of them pop up. Then you can just simply select which cross hop bar that you'd like to go to and then all of your gear sets will be right there. I am on PC but I do use a controller so I know that it works for PC and I've played on console before so I know it works on console as well. Number seven, you can get a bonus experience ring that's really going to help out level your jobs early on. You get this ring by doing the Hall of Novice. The main story does take you to the Hall of Novice but it does not make you do the tutorials. Once you reach the Hall of Novice you're going to want to talk to the NPC and do all eight of the tutorials in order to get the 30% experience bonus ring. You also get some snazzy new gear that's going to last you for quite a bit, at least two or three levels. This is going to be great to equip for all of your jobs when you're leveling them up from 1 through 30 and we'll speed it up a little bit. Another pro tip that a lot of new players or casuals might not know is that if you equipped an experience bonus ring that only works 30 or under, if you do the leveling roulette and you're level 50 but it takes you to a level 22 dungeon or level 24 dungeon, then you're still going to get that bonus experience if you have that ring equipped. So it works for synced content. Number eight, unlock your retainer ventures. Retainer ventures are unlocked by a blue quest called an ill-conceived venture. You can find these in any three of the main cities depending on where you started. This allows your retainers, which are the storage of the game, to go on ventures and pretty much collect stuff for you. If it's a battle class, it will collect skins, leathers, and other things. If it's a gathering class, then you can collect minerals or plants if you're a botanist. They're really, really super helpful and you should definitely be having your retainers go out on ventures. Your retainer class should reflect your main job that you're playing with. The reason being is that your retainers can go only as high as you have that job. If I had to break it down, if you have a black mage level 80, but your retainer jobs are paladin and you only have your paladin to level 30, your retainers can only get to level 30 because your paladin's only level 30. So that's why you want to make sure you do it as your main job. So then you can level it all the way up to 80. Make sure to update your retainers as you level them up. And that's why you want to choose your main job because then you can just recycle your class gear. Number nine, when do I get my first mount? This is the burning question that all sprouts have is when do I get my first chocobo? Don't worry, you can't miss it because it's in the main story quest. You will have access to your chocobo at main story quest level 20 right after you get your grand company. This is not character level 20. This is main story quest 20. You just have to advance far enough in the story in order to get them out. You will then need 200 seals in order to purchase your chocobo issuance, which is going to give you your chocobo mount. But you can get these through the main story, so you don't really have to worry about going off and getting them yourself. Once you have done the quest and got your seals, go back to the NPC vendor and trade those seals in for the chocobo issuance. Take this to the proper NPC, the game will tell you how to do it, and boom, you get your chocobo 
joke about and you get to name it. Make sure to go into your mount guide, which is in the settings, and you'll want to drag and drop which mount that you want to call for your cross hotbar or hotbar. This makes it really easy to summon your mount whenever you're out of town. You'll want to get in the habit of summoning it every single time that you're out of town to really cut down on the running back and forth on foot. How do I summon my chocobo for battle? Well, the first thing you're going to need to do is get your character to level 30 and do your job quest. Once you have the job quest done, you'll see the quest My Little my feisty little chocobo i think it's called up right below your main story quest this quest is going to be in the gridania area after you complete that quest you can buy goshul greens which then you can use to summon your chocobo and have him fight for you once you have him fighting for you you can give it sp points which gives it attacks and kind of buffs him up there are many different ways to spread out these skills i will say that i didn't find the tanking chocobo to be super helpful more of the attacking and the regen one were better because it was more effective in battle and you're doing more damage than your chocobo so a lot of the time you pull aggro from him anyway so i would say focus on the healer and the attacking one anyone else can leave their comments down below to give any recommendations for the chocobo leveling up tip number 11 you can change your hair appearance makeup and tattoos without the use of a Fantasia potion. By unlocking the hairdresser in Limza Lominza, you don't need a Fantasia every single time you need to change your character appearance. By doing the level 15 quest, only scalp deep, you can get access to the esthetician. This is going to allow you to change your hair, makeup, eyes, and just a few other things. It's not a full Fantasia, but it will allow you to change up your character from time to time. You then simply just have to go to any inn and you'll see an esthetician bell. Tip number 12, there is a certain part of the story where you're gonna have to go to Vesper Bays a lot. I believe the game does give you now Vesper Bay tickets, which is phenomenal, and we did not have those when we were playing through the main story. So make sure to really appreciate those because that's something that is amazing that they did a quality of life improvement for. But if you do run out of those tickets or if those tickets are not enough, because I've been playing for a long time, I'm not sure if they give you enough for the entire playthrough of that story. You can simply teleport to Limza Lominza, fast travel to the Arcanist or Arcanist Guild. I'm sure you guys are gonna tell me how to say that in the chat. And then take the ferry over to Vesper Bay. This is gonna take you right in the middle of Vesper Bay. And you won't have to teleport to the Horizons and then walk to Vesper Bay. This is the fastest way other than the Vesper Bay tickets that you get. Tip number 13, you can do things while you're waiting for queues. So many time I have new players ask me, well, I'm waiting for a DPS queue and they're just sitting around. You can be doing blue unlock quests, you can be doing side quests, you can be leveling up alt jobs and just switch back to that job. You're not stuck in some time void where you can't move or do anything while you're queuing. There are so many things to do in the game and you really need to learn how to start multitasking because there's just so much. That's just my personal opinion. You can get so much done in the game while DPS are waiting for queues. And we finally made it. Tip number 14, you don't need to hoard your items. If anything is special, then you can't sell it anyway. I have this video, Practical Inventory Management Guide, and this is really gonna go over everything you need to know for a sprout or as a casual in order to manage your inventory effectively at first you might not find it to be a problem but as you play through the game even the first 10 levels you're gonna find out that you're gonna get a lot of things from enemy kills to story quest rewards and more so you'll want to know what you should do with those if you keep on top of it from the very beginning then you will have no problems at all there you have it 14 practical tips that i wish i knew when i started final fantasy 14 back in the day i want to give a huge shout out to my patreon supporters thank you so much for your continued support it really does mean the world to me if you want to consider supporting the channel then you can go in my link tree down below and you'll find all the links to learn how to do that you can also connect with me on social media there or if you want to keep watching final fantasy tutorial videos then you can click here